Hi Apple lovers and welcome to another episode of Apple Budget Buys. In this series I look at affordable older Apple tech to see if it's still usable today. Today we are looking at the MacBook Air 2014 edition. Is it still usable in 2024? Let's find out. Welcome to the Tech Hub. So let's delve into the specification. So this is a MacBook Air 13 inch, which is LED backlit, uh, 2014 edition. Um, it has an Intel i5 core 1.3 gigahertz processor, four gigabytes of RAM, which is not upgradable, unfortunately, and it has a 128 gigabyte solid state hard drive. Now that is possible to change it and you can look at places like iFixit for guides on how to do that. The macOS it runs is macOS Big Sur, which is 11.7.10. Um, I didn't have to upgrade this. For once I was sent a device that was fully charged and it didn't need any updates at all. So God bless you seller, thank you. So on, on to the unboxing, this was packaged very nicely. Uh, bubble wrap's always good to see. I mean, if you don't ship it in the original box, which this one didn't, you need to protect it. Anyway, I was really happy with the condition. Um, I had to give it a bit of a clean, but after it, it cleaned up nicely, the condition was good. Now, once I did give it a clean, the condition, like I said, was very good. Um, the screen only had very, very minor marks on it, which is great for that age. I mean, this is nearly 10 years old. Um, there was minor marks on the side and the body. Um, obviously, there's always marks on the bottom because that's where it lies down, but people don't tend to be that fussed about it. Uh, so I listed this as used good. Now, on the lid, there did seem to be some form of a skin. It was like a darker grey, which was more of a, um, a matte grey. Um, and I did put in the listing that if you had the patience, you could peel it off. Uh, but ultimately, the person that did pick it up from me in the end wasn't that fussed about it and it didn't look too out of place once you cleaned it up nicely. So the setup was, was great. This seller had factory restored it. So I got the initial setup screen, which was great. Now, unlike Mac OS Catalina that I did on my last unboxing, um, this one didn't have the verification issue. So when I did sign into my Apple ID, that came, the prompt came up and needed the number, um, which I didn't have on the previous Mac OS which was fantastic, it logged in absolutely fine. There was one software update, not the main OS, but a Safari update and Safari worked absolutely fine. In the Wi-Fi test, I also got 500 megabits a second. So really, really happy. Uh, and I was really impressed with that. So the, the Wi-Fi is good on this machine. It's a lovely, sleek, small, portable device, which is what the appeal was at the time of its release. Now in these Apple budget buys, I do the same test. So I download pages, Word, a game from Apple Arcade. I have a play with photos and uh, I export a movie in iMovie. Now in my last unboxing on macOS Catalina, um, I had to find a workaround because it wouldn't let me download previous versions of the apps, uh, which, and you have to get a previous version of that app to work in this OS. However, on Big Sur, Again, just search for the app you want to download and it automatically downloads the previous version. It tells you it's going to do it, but it does download the previous version. So I didn't have that issue that I had before. Uh, so Mac OS Big Sur is a solid OS. And basically what I've come to realize when it comes to these tests that I'm doing, it all very much depends on the OS that it runs on how usable it is. So pages and Word downloaded fine, installed fine and worked fine. Uh, again, you do, I did need a lot of patience because remember the processor isn't that fast and it's only four gigs of RAM as well. I downloaded Cut the Rope from Apple Arcade. Yes, that's my favorite game on Apple Arcade. So that's the one I use. Again, when it did eventually load, the video segments of that game were very cluttery and stuttery. However, once the game started, it was playable. In iMovie, again, once it loaded, I uh, imported a 20 second video clip and it took two minutes and 20 seconds to export a 4K version. So let's talk about uses in 2024. Absolutely great as a web browser, um, very basic office task. So pages, numbers, keynote, or 
Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, absolutely fine. Again, once it's installed, so much like these older devices, once you've downloaded it and it's installed it and ran for the first time, it does work fine, but that's the bit where you really need the patience for. But once it's set up, it, it does absolutely work fine. Like I said, it's a great portable device. Um, so this very much for me, a student that doesn't have a lot of money um, that needs the portability of a device, uh, or if you're one for taking a device to a coffee shop or somewhere that's not at home, uh, absolutely great. It, it's 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 tiny. It's I wouldn't say powerful, but it does the job well once everything is set up. Now it's absolutely fine when it comes to using photos. So if you do very minimal editing uh, in uh, Apple Photos and you've got a photo library, it is usable. But be patient with it. I wouldn't recommend it at all for any form of video editing. Uh, I, I was a bit mean and used a 4K clip and exported to 4K, uh, but ultimately everyone's phone nowadays does record in 4K, that's what we're using. Uh, but I think this would even struggle at 1080p as well. So to summarize, yes, it is usable for very, very basic tasks, but you do have great portability and again, I think this device looks absolutely lovely. So who's this for? Young students with not a lot of money, maybe a secondary student as well, um, somebody's first little laptop uh, to do. Um, no intensive gaming, just Apple Arcade. And again, the full library did turn out, did show, unlike Mac, Mac OS Catalina, the version before. So I hope you've liked this video. Do you have this MacBook Air? Are you considering buying one? Um, price wise, you can expect somewhere between 150 up to 250 pounds, uh, depending on the spec. Uh, I recommend you get at least eight gigs of RAM because this can't be upgraded after you've chosen the device. 128 gigabytes is also quite low uh, by today's standards. So I would go for at least 256 gigabytes of hard drive capacity. Uh, so you can expect in the region of 170 to 200 pounds for that spec. Anyway, I've hoped you enjoyed this video. Please like this video if you have. Please subscribe to my channel and please follow me at Instagram and threads at Tech Hub UK. I will see you on the next episode.